Good morning. Welcome to the Greenway Breakfast virtual style. I'm Mike Woodson, proud staff member of the Greenway Trust for the last 10 years. I am slinging blueberry pancakes here on the shores of Lake Sammamish. Uh, the weather's holding up so far. We had a little rain this morning. Uh, I'm excited to get the show started. Um, last year, for those of you who were here, we had a lot of fun on the chat channel, much of it at my expense directly, as I recall. Uh, just to let you know, I will not be able to see none of the speakers will be able to see the chat messages real time this year but the magnificent Mackenzie Dahlstad will be manning the chat channel so please one of the most fun parts of last year was sharing what you're having for breakfast if you're doing something special uh, it's been said many times that food is a key part of the Greenway Trust culture breaking bread together and this is this is how we're doing it right now also if you have any questions about the Greenway as we go Mackenzie will be on it he types like 125 words per minute so he will get to all of your questions if you still need to take your shots at me, I will definitely promise you I'll review the chat transcript later and I will get a chuckle out of uh, your roasting of me as you did last year. Uh, I'm gonna move over here, get this pancake off before it burns um, and move over this way. <clears throat> now, as we get started, um, I always wanna remember that we should hope we're lucky enough to have some new audience members with us. I know there's a lot of Greenway faithful and uh, we thank you for being here. We thank you so much for your support of the Greenway throughout this difficult time and already of this event, the support has been amazing. <clears throat> for those of you who are new, it is uh, diff Greenway 101 is, uh, can be a pretty uh, complicated story. So I'm gonna try to do Greenway 101 in about 101. Um, and I will go back to do that. I'm going to go to the phrase that I heard a lot when I first started 10 years ago, which was place based. And it really is a phrase that is helpful to understand what the Greenway Trust is all about. We concern ourselves with the entire Greenway landscape, a million and a half acres from here out to Ellensburg. Uh, and really every way that people interact with nature and green space across that landscape, we want to be a part of that conversation. We want to be a part of bringing people and organizations together to do good work together to secure the future that we want, which is this incredibly green, beautiful, natural place right in and around and uh, woven throughout our cities. And that's what the Greenway Trust is all about. That means we do a lot of different things. And our goal in today's event is to take you out on the landscape to meet some of the people out there doing that actual work. And it's rare that we get a chance to connect our audience with the people out there on the ground doing the work. That's our goal for today is we want to hear from those people and uh, with no further ado, I will hand it over to my co-pilot today, our executive director, John Hookstra, and John is gonna say a few things and get us started. Thanks, Mike. Good morning, everybody. Uh, again, my name is John Hookstra. I'm the executive director of the Greenway Trust. Um, thank you for joining us for our virtual <laughs> breakfast. Um, sitting socially distanced from Mike, um, it's kind of a special day for me. This is the first time we've gotten to see each other since the pandemic began. Um, it's hard to believe it's been more than a year. And, and when we all gathered for our virtual breakfast a year ago, I don't think we had any idea just how much the pandemic was gonna affect us and how much it was gonna change um, what normal feels like. But I'm, I'm feeling optimistic that we have some of the essential tools and knowledge we need um, to begin to overcome this. So if you haven't done it yet, get your vaccine, um, keep your social distance outside, mask up when you're indoors, and um, let's get this pandemic behind us so that the next time we do a breakfast, we can really be together in person. So um, as Mike said in, in talking about the Greenway 101, the, you know, the, the Greenway's foundation are the lands and waters that so many people have worked to conserve over the last 30 years. Um, but the Greenway is so much more than its physical features. The Greenway is also a place of rich cultural uh, and culture and heritage. And as a new national heritage area, um, we're dedicated, the Greenway Trust is dedicated to holding up and celebrating uh, the, the people side of the Greenway. And we hope that today, um, in addition to learning about some of the projects on the ground, um, your appetite is gonna be whetted to learn more about um, all the different stories of people and their relationships to this place. Um, from the very first people, the Native American tribes who are still the first stewards of this land uh, to our very newest arrivals. Um, people are as much a part of the Greenway as the landscape and we hope we'll be celebrating that together today. Um, before we begin, I do wanna um, take a moment to thank some of our sponsors. Our 
Presenting sponsors today are Greenvelope and Waste Management. Our leadership sponsors are the Boeing Company, Patelco, Cascadia Law Group, AAA Washington, and REI Co-op. And our community sponsors are Perkins Cooey, Asplen Tree Experts, and the City of Issaquah. Thank you all for your support and for your partnership. So um, this morning, we're gonna take you all on a virtual journey across the Greenway as, as we feature some of the locations that make this place so extraordinarily special and celebrate some of the projects that the Greenway Trust and our incredible partners are working on to care for the Mount Sound Greenway National Heritage Area. As we gear up for our journey, uh, I want to invite my friend and Greenway board member, Allison Washburn, to join me here in camp. And I'm gonna ask Allison to share a few words on behalf of our longtime partner um, and host here today at Lake Sammamish State Park, REI Co-op. Welcome, Allison. It's great to see you in real life. Too. It has been forever. It's so nice to see you. It's so nice to see you live in a personal way. You too. Uh, I found one of those. So I'm ready. Uh, so good morning. And uh, as, as most of you know, REI was founded on the principle of coming together for the greater good, accomplishing more together than they ever could have alone. And this is a value that REI shares with our friend at the Greenway. Um, he has a coalition. So at REI, we believe that time spent outdoors uh, is, is fundamental to the life of the And it's our mission to connect people to the power of the outdoors and engage them in the fight to protect it. So as we see more and more people connecting with uh, nature and understanding and, and realizing the power of time spent outdoors, it's our responsibility as stewards to really help protect these spaces, these spaces that are so important to us and help us disconnect from our busy lives and connect with ourselves and reconnect with nature. So it's really through the good work of organizations like the Greenway Trust that we can all engage in this work and enable uh, life outside for everyone. So thank you for all the work that you're doing in Greenway and thank you for your support of the Greenway Trust and engaging in this great space. Thanks, Allison. Um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna jump from Lake Sammamish State Park to our first on location uh, broadcast. So um, it's my pleasure to introduce um, our senior regional trail network correspondent Amy Brockhouse and her guest Catherine Hollis um, from the East Trail. Amy and Catherine. Good morning. We are standing on the East Trail in the community of Renton on the shores of Lake Washington. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. And throughout the entire Mountains to Sound Greenway, we have long held the hope that all communities will be connected by regional trail. So I'm very excited this morning to be able to introduce you to Catherine Paulus, Executive Director of East Trail Partners. And she is here this morning to tell us some about some exciting new developments on this trail. So welcome and thank you. Thanks, Amy. Hi, everyone. Like Amy said, we're on the southern end of the East Trail in Renton, just north of Jean Coulomb Park. And the East Trail is a former rail corridor that stretches from Renton all the way to Woodenville with sort of a spur or a jog into Redmond and eventually we'll connect all the way to Snohomish, Washington. Um, currently there's about 13 miles of open trail. Uh, this morning we've seen folks walking, running, dogs, out with their dogs. I think we've seen two strollers since we've been out here. Um, also, I think as, as we've stood here, I've seen three hummingbirds go by. We've got a pair of ducks up there. Um, so it's really neat to think about this corridor um, and the, the history of the rail in this area, but also what this trail can be. Um, so it, the East Trail runs north-south, sort of the full breadth of the Greenway watershed at this point in the map. And I really think that so much about this, this trail effort and the East Trail um, really reflects what the Greenway Trust is all about, which is conserving and enhancing landscapes and community connections and our role as communities in that. So like I said, there are a number of sections of the East Trail already opened with a few more big sections um, opening up this year and a whole lot more coming online over the next few years. So the goal is to have a fully connected trail that runs from Renton all the way into Woodenville and eventually all the way into Snohomish. Eastville Partners as an organization works 
with the diverse communities of Lake Washington's east side, along with the local and regional governmental entities involved with this effort, um, corporations and nonprofits to catalyze and unify this effort um, and to increase equity through access. So there are a few things about East Trail that I wanna to cover today um, that we're really excited about. And I think again, really fit with this overall vision um, of, of the Greenway and what the Greenway Trust is all about. This year, more than anything, well, there's so many things we've learned this past year, but the need for close to home recreation, I think has, has come front and center for so many people, whether you're walking or rolling, strolling or, or running, having space like this to be able to get out and move is so important. And to think about this corridor coming online as a trail for 42 miles on the east side for this region, I think is, is again, it's just such a neat opportunity as we think about how we interact with the landscape. It's, as you can see, it's a green space in and of itself. Um, so the conservation value of having the slice of green that goes through rapidly um, growing urban areas and job centers, and then into more rural areas, is this really, I think, unique way that we're seeing connections between two counties, multiple cities, municipalities, and the communities that live along this corridor. It's also really a piece of our regional climate solution, um, making it easy. So the East Trail was, was developed um, directly with the light rail stations that are going in on the east side along with rapid ride um, stations. And so really making it safe and easy to think about public transit and biking and fitting those things into what could be your commute to work, your commute to a park, um, decreasing carbon emissions in that way. And last but not least, East Trail is a really significant north-south spine of our regional trail network. Um, as we think about the trails throughout the Greenway watershed, um, we're really excited about this one coming online and the connections it's going to have to other regional trails like the Mount Sound Trail um, at I-90 and Factoria that just opened. So hope that folks have a chance to get out this weekend somewhere in the Greenway. The East Trail is a great option and I'll hand it back to Lake Sammamish. Thank you so much, Catherine, and thank you, Amy. I am going to keep us moving right along and we're going to talk restoration for a minute. It is my great honor to hand it off to my colleague, our restoration correspondent uh, upstream here on Esquad Creek at Pickering Barn, Tor Bell, with, uh, I'm just going to say it, my favorite mayor. Tor, are you there? Tor, do you hear me? All right. Well, I think we're going to rearrange the tour. Do you, are you there? Are you on location? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I now can hear can. you. You can hear We're good. I just want to make sure your guests heard me about the favorite mayor part. I'm oh, the favorite mayor excited. part. Yes, indeed. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, over to you then. Excellent. Well, we're here on Issaquah Creek in the city of Issaquah, and I'm joined uh, by Issaquah Mayor Mary Lou Pauly, and we're talking restoration and the importance and the values uh, associated with restoring these creeks. And Mayor Pauly, can you talk just a little bit about why this is important and what this is all entailed? Sure, Tor and I'll sound green my team. Issaquah Creek has been, and the Sammamish watershed have been part of the Coast Salish First Nations folks uh, tribes for ages. They have been stewarding the century. The creek is still a salmon bearing creek. It has a significant run. And as the town grew and as the town got built around the creek, we want to make sure that we're still preserving and protecting this wonderful waterway for the generations to come so that the salmon continue to run so that the space that they're in is clean and wonderful. And so we are just so glad that we get to work with Mount Stown Greenway and our other partners to work on restoration on the creek. Fantastic. Well, can tell me a little bit about the process. What has this looked like over the last couple of decades here in the city? Thank you, Tor. We have been working with Mount Stown Greenway for over 25 years on Issaquah Creek. It's, it's a long haul commitment to bring a creek back to what it used to be before we were here, before we settled. So there's a couple of different things we work on. One is it tends to, when cities develop, when urban areas develop around natural areas, 
we end up disturbing what is the natural and native flora and trees and end up putting hardscape or invasive come in. So we spend a lot of time working on shorelines, uh, replanting, regrading projects so that we can create a beautiful, wonderful, natural edge to the creek. And we also work in the creek. Mount Sound Greenway has been helping us restore some of those natural riffles and quiet areas that the salmon need as they move upstream in the fall each year. And the great thing is uh, when we put in large woody debris, and this is something that's really important to Mount Sound Greenway and really important to Escort Creek Restoration, but I love it when I get calls from residents asking me to remove the debris. And I get to explain the story of why we're putting that in there in the first place. So we work both in the water and along the wonderful creekway edges. Fantastic. Tell me a little bit about partnerships. What role partnerships have been uh, have been as part of this restoration effort and specifically the role that the Greenway Trust has had working with the city? Yeah, the Greenway Trust has been the glue for us that has brought together a very unique collaboration of private uh, landowners, uh, public agencies, funding from various sources, community groups, school kids. Um, we're a small city and we love this little treasure that runs right through our town, but without a partnership, we would not be able to do all the great work that the Greenway has sponsored and coordinated for us over the years. So um, we, we love our partners and, and the work that's being done, like I said, it's long haul, but the sections that have been restored are stunning. And the system that we're creating, this beautiful, beautiful recreation of this original Creekway is a gift for future generations. So we just couldn't do it without you. And we're so grateful. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Well, thank you for being here today, Mayor Pauley. And we couldn't do this work without you and your team here in the city. So much appreciated. That's great. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Mayor Pauley. Thank you, Tor. Um, it's really fun to hear about all the restoration work. Another kind of post-pandemic thing that I hope um, maybe the two of you can organize um, when it's possible is to do a tour along the creek. I know it's possible to, to take quite a walk and see what that 25 years of restoration work is starting to, to look like. So um, thank you both. Um, we're gonna now jump uh, over into Fremont and the Burke Yeoman Trail. I'm gonna hand it over to our senior correspondent, Caroline Villanova and her guest Jennifer Ott. Caroline and Jennifer. Hi everybody. Good morning. Um, good morning. Uh, you'll, I'm Caroline. I work with the Green White Trust and I get the pleasure of being out on the Burke Gilman Trail in Fremont with Jennifer Ott. She is the assistant director and historian at the History Link and we are out here like getting to enjoy a beautiful morning. We biked over and there's a lot of other bikers and walkers and people using the trail. Um, we realized we're the furthest west, I think, uh, in the in the landscape this morning. Um, we got some coffee, thanks to Jennifer uh, in Fremont, and just super excited to celebrate the National Heritage Area and a bit of the heritage that the Greenway as an organization gets to help support and promote. So I'm going to hand it off to Jennifer, but thank you so much for being here. This has been a great morning. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really happy to be part of this. And um, I love that we're highlighting the history. Uh, here we are on the Burke Gilman Trail on the Ship Canal. And it's one of the things that the Greenway has preserved um, is this connection between the waterways and the overland routes throughout the region. And um, in addition to the environmental and the um, recreational opportunities that are in the Greenway, we have this chance to really immerse ourselves in the layered history of this region. I mean, just right here in this spot, we have the Burke Gilman, which is the railroad history. We have the Ship Canal, which is the vessel history. But then we also have that layer that's been here since time immemorial, which is that this was the canoe connection between the salt water and the inland lakes. And so you get that sense of how people have moved in this region throughout history as long as people have been here. And then you get the added benefit that the Greenway takes you up and over the Cascade Crest. And that is such an important connection just forever. It's been the goods that have traveled back and forth, the people, the social connections. Um, I love that the Greenway embraces both of those things. And then also that the trust by preserving the history and promoting it, um, 
we can understand sort of how this place has evolved. Um, if the region had just grown into one big long suburb, we wouldn't really understand what it was like to have these discrete towns that have their own identity and the relationship between the metropolitan area and the foothills. And so all the work that's been done to keep those um, structures and that um, character intact is so important. And then you get the work that the trust has done to bring people together. Um, the people that are doing that heritage work, um, I got to attend the Heritage Action Committee last week. And I was so invigorated at all of the great work people are doing. And because of the trust bringing people together, it just amplifies their efforts, which is just a wonderful thing to see. So I'm so happy to be part of this today and um, wish you all the best. Thank you, Jennifer. And it's awesome to be out here with an expert historian um, this morning like yourself. So thank you are some of those people that are doing this work. So, and great stories. Yeah. But really happy to be here with everyone. Thanks for joining. I have to say hi to my mom. Um, <laughs> and back to you, John and Mike. Thank you so much, Caroline and Jennifer. I just want to say, if you haven't been on History Link, uh, there's a lot of amazing content there, a lot of good stuff about the Greenway, and particularly an amazing piece about our founder, Jim Ellis, and I really strongly urge you to check out that incredible essay if you have a chance. Uh, HistoryLink.org, just search for Jim Ellis or the Greenway. And also, Caroline stole my thunder. I was going to give a shout out to my fellow New Englander and mysterious Greenway trivia master, Mara Villanova. Mara, I hope you're there this morning. Uh, Next, we are going to head east and climb up into the High Cascades, uh, where I hope that a couple of our expert trails correspondents, Joel Ulbrich and Mike Stanger, are standing by and having some breakfast and telling us about the work up there. Joe and Mike, do you hear me? Yes, we do. We do. Good morning. Uh, I'm Mike Stanger. I'm a uh, recreation project manager with the Greenway and Joe Ulbrick, my uh, co-worker, recreation coordinator with the Greenway. We're up here on the top of Dirty Harry's Balcony. It's a fairly new trail. It has a great story to it um, and a great view. And um, Joe, could you tell us a little bit about why Dirty Harry's Balcony is important and what it means to you? Yeah, so, hey everyone. Um, as Mike said, I'm trail and field projects coordinator for the Greenway. Um, I have spent a lot of time out on the Greenway landscape working on trails. And uh, like a lot of uh, transplanted Washingtonians and born and raised Washingtonians, um, I really wanted to get out and explore uh, the outdoors when I got here in 2014. So one of the first things I did was take my car and I pointed it to Dirty Harry's. So this was in 2014, and when I got here, um, the, the trail was in really rough shape. Um, I wanted to get to the climbing areas, but I couldn't really find them. Um, there were a lot of different social trails. I got um, lost in the woods, and this happened the first several times I came to Dirty Harry's. But um, we all knew that we needed to support the DNR on getting this place in ship shape so that people who may be newer to the area could have um, a place that they could go out and recreate safely. Um, so with the collective efforts of the Greenway, the Washington Trails Association, Access Fund, Mountaineers, DNR, the Earth Corps, um, the Washington Conservation Corps, all the groups came together uh, and lent a hand in getting this trail in uh, uh, safe uh, shape for people to recreate at. And this remains one more popular trail area. So um, it's one of the areas that on a, on a nice day, the cars will be all the way lined up to the freeway. Um, and it, there's increasing use out here and uh, it shares a similar story to a lot of other places that we're, we've been working at. And um, like I said, I've been working out on the landscape for seven years, but um, I'm next to Mike Stanger, who's been working out on the landscape much longer than I have. And uh, Mike, where have you been? Where have you been working recently? Where are some projects that excite you? 
Well, I'll just share one of my favorite trails is a trail that we're actually working on now, the Greenway is, which is the Rattlesnake Ledge Trail, which many of you have heard of, I know, because uh, last records are that close to 300,000 people a year were climbing that trail to view that ledge and enjoy that place. Think about that, 300,000 people. You could fill the Seahawks Stadium four times and send all those people out to hike on one trail. And that would be climbing up Rattlesnake Ledge. Now, that's a wonderful thing that so many people are getting out to enjoy nature, but it does mean that places we love get used pretty hard. Think of all those feet grinding on the soil and the rain coming down and washing it away. And so we have to rebuild our trails periodically. And a lot of what the Greenway does is help make that happen. We do the partnerships that Joe was talking about with the agencies and with other organizations. And, uh, and sorry, my timer got, my, got me a little distracted there. But the Greenway is a part of the process from beginning to end, from planning a project to helping agencies fund it, to writing the grants, and then to actually doing the project on the ground, whether it's with contractors or volunteers, which are such an important part of what we do. We're here for the long haul to make sure that these places are maintained, that they're taken care of, that the choices are environmentally sound, so many parts. So that's, what, that's why I'm so excited to come and work with the Greenway every day. Um, and I hope you guys get out to enjoy Rattlesnake Ledge and some of these other amazing places in the Greenway real soon. Back to you guys, thanks Sam. Well, thank, well, thank, well, thank, thank you so much. Did you guys have something else? Yeah, I was gonna say before we turn it back, just want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms and mother figures out there. Oh, that's well done. Well done, Mike. Thank you, guys. You made our day. Handing it over to John now. Oh, I Thanks, Mike and Joe. Uh, have, a, have a good hike down this morning. Um, you know, hearing, hearing the statistics you were sharing about Rattlesnake Ledge, it, it reminds me of two things that all of us should remember when we do get out to enjoy some of the, the wilderness trails that you can find in the Greenway. And one is, is recreate responsibly, especially during the pandemic time. Um, if, you, if you don't, you've got your 10 essentials, but you also want to make sure you're practicing ways of recreating responsibly and going light on the land, leaving no trace, making sure you're picking up not just your own trash, but maybe some that someone else left behind. And also, I just want to remind people, especially with places like Rattlesnake Mountain and Mount Si that are so popular um, for many hikers, these are the ancestral lands of, of the First Nations of this country, of, of the Sopalmi people, the Salish people. And so please, please, please um, go into the Greenway with respect and knowing that you're on, on land that's sacred um, to a number of people here in the Greenway as well. So as the rain starts to fall here at Lake Sammamish State Park, we're gonna kick it over now to, to my favorite side of the Greenway, of uh, Kittitas County, the Upper Yakima Basin, the top of Clay Ellum Ridge where Nikki Passy is joined by Melissa Spee, Patty O'Hearn, in Gary Burt, I hope it's sunny over there. Um, Nikki. It's not it bad. Over. Yeah, it's it's uh, nice and overcast and warm and beautiful here. Um, I'm on the Cleelum Ridge right now, overlooking the Tianoe Valley and the Cleelum Valley. And with me from right to left are Melissa Spieg, who is the facilitator of the Checkerboard Partnership. She is with Kittitas Conservation Trust. Gary Burt, who is retired DNR, past county commissioner and past mayor of Cleelum and Patty O'Hearn, who is a small forest farm landowner adjacent to the community forest and a member of the Washington Farm Forestry Association. These are members of the Checkerboard Community Partnership. And I'd just like to have them talk a little bit about this project that we do. So we are a group of community members, nonprofits, uh, local people working for the agencies here, um, as well as uh, representatives of our local government and um, we're working to conserve the last 27,000 acres here in Kittitas County. Uh, it's the last large pieces of, of land here uh, and it's really important to us to protect it. Okay. So what I would say is it's more than just critically important. It's imperative that we are successful in filling out the last three parcels of land in Kittitas County, which will complete the land ownership puzzle in our county. And why is that important? Because I've always been, and I believe the Greenway would support it as well, 
we need to have access to public lands long term. And it takes all of us to get that done. So uh, we can have this for our generation and generations to come. Okay. Our mission is to connect these forests with the community and to maintain them in a sustainable manner. We wanna develop a stewardship plan that has local benefit, uh, one that preserves wildlife corridors and ensures that future generations have access to these cherished lands. We wanna balance uh, the activities of personal enjoyment that the community has experienced for years and with a healthy habitat rich forest. Okay. So, and uh, really exciting. So uh, we work with a really diverse amount of partners that have been really dedicated to this process. And as of April 24th, the legislature passed a budget that will um, that funded the Recreation and Conservation Office's Community Forest Program uh, at $16 million. And that included $3 million worth of funding for our project up here on the Ridge. So super exciting. Uh, we really appreciate all the partners in this community um, and all the people for over 20 years that have been talking about this. Uh, and and uh, have realized this dream of, of the first phase of this community forest. Uh, so the Greenway is an active partner in this process. We help with, with grant writing, with community outreach, and in future years to help plan access to these new public lands. Uh, we'll have further updates in future years for you, hopefully as we acquire more $3 million packages to uh, get those future phases. But in the meantime, if you would like to follow along with this project, you can find us online at checkerboardpartnership.com. Back to you guys at uh, Lake Sammamish. Thank you so much, team. That's uh, fantastic. Congratulations on that incredible grant award. Uh, a couple of things before we move on, just wanna say, you know, all of us, I think most of our audience is West, West Siders here. And uh, we should all be aware of the, the pressure that we exert on the, the natural resources on the east side of the Greenway and, and just leaning in in any way we can to support these projects and uh, support the recreational infrastructure there to volunteer to donate and just to be involved over there so that we're giving back to the resource as well as just using it. Um, and uh, we so appreciate the work that you, you're all doing over there. Uh, next, I, and that, that actually concludes our, our remote locations. Uh, I'm incredibly excited at how well that went. You're all amazing. Uh, it's a real honor for me to introduce our next speaker. Uh, the Greenway Trust has worked with King County over the last four years to host um, clean water ambassador interns who are local high school students who are interested in careers in water and natural resource management. And uh, these young men and women have been just incredible. They uh, work over the summer, they do research and help contribute to water quality monitoring. And then they continue on in their schools and communities as advocates for uh, clean water and natural resources. And these are uh, future uh, agency heads and executive directors and dare I hope fundraisers, Pro probably not fundraisers, um, uh, better than that. And uh, Robin Yang, one of our clean water ambassadors has agreed to speak and share some uh, words of inspiration and some of her thoughts from uh, about conservation in this strange time we've all been enduring. Robin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Um, hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today. Um, I'm sorry I can't be in front of a pretty trail or river or mountains, but I guess you all have to just use your imagination. Um, anyways, as um, that, as was said, I am a former clean intern with the Greenway. Um, and being a clean water ambassador intern is really all about experiential learning um, and the internship has really paved the way for how I approach learning outside of the classroom. And today I just want to share you share with you all a little story that reflects that. So it was a Monday afternoon, a little bit over a year ago. Um, I think it was like April of last year. And I had just listened to Governor Inslee officially announce that I and all students in Washington would not be returning to school that year. Um, and so as you can imagine, this just topped off everything else that had been canceled and everything else that was completely upside down last year. 
Um, so I didn't really know how to process that news, um, especially as I remembered all of my teachers saying weeks before that, oh, I doubt school would be canceled. Like it's very unlikely school is gonna be canceled. Um, so my teachers had never been more wrong. Um, and so I didn't really know how to process that. I immediately switched off the press conference and took a long walk in my neighborhood. And at this point, walks were really unheard of in my world. Um, I was not a walker, but um, I, was, I was honestly angry and I didn't really know how to process any of what was going on. Um, I was angry, not really at myself, not at any political figure. I wasn't really angry at anyone, but I was just angry about not being able to control anything external in my life. Um, but I couldn't be angry for long because I became distracted by something kind of bizarre. So the trail I had been walking along has a ditch parallel to it. And that ditch was entirely filled with this sludgy orange liquid flowing down it. And I was just like, what in the world is that? What could this be? So I was intrigued and I took a pause for my walk to figure out what it was. Um, I sat down, I examined it. Um, and I did some research through both Google and my clean water ambassador group chat, of course. Um, and it turns out that water in the ditch must have had a high level of iron in it and subsequently must have had like soaring amounts of iron oxidizing bacteria in it, which was the orange stuff. And so I also learned that these microbes have actually been pulling off this remarkable feat for the past two to three billion years. Um, they apparently survive by feeding on the iron dissolved in particular water flows, which is something really difficult to do because iron has such sparse amounts of energy. And honestly, upon first glance, this orange substance seemed really scary and I thought it was super bad for the environment, but I soon learned it was actually the opposite. So when the bacteria feeds on the iron, it turns to rust. And then that rust has the potential to grab onto bits and pieces floating by like arsenic or other harmful metals, even viruses. Um, so essentially these bacteria can actually help filter the water, which I thought was so amazing. Um, so back to the point of the story, um, learning about like this mysterious orange sludge that day, it really gave me a like sense of hope during all the chaos that was going on. Um, I was able to learn about this like complex scientific concept in the real world outside of the classroom. And this led me to realize that there are many things we can't control. But there are also so many things we can control, for example, our attitudes and our willingness to learn um, in the midst of things that are just insecure and uncontrollable. Um, and more broadly, this sort of learning experience reminded me to focus on the little things we can control, even if the things happening around us are big picture and uncontrollable. Um, and little did I know, here we are over a year later, we're still not quite out of this pandemic, but I'm still utilizing this lesson in my life. Um, and almost every day now, I go on a walk through the same trail and pass the same orange ditch. And when I'm in need of some inspiration to carry on uh, throughout this exhausting remote world, I am inspired by the orange sludge in the ditch. Um, so in terms of environmental conservation, in terms of the life approaching that is outside of this pandemic. Um, and in terms of your own personal lives, take this little story as a reminder that the things we can control are actually big things because they will fuel us. And so today we took a journey across the Greenway and learned about all the things big and small that fuel the Greenway, all the things that make the Greenway so great and all the things that make the Greenway better year after year. On the East Trail, we learned about the Greenway's work towards a connected landscape. At Issaquah Creek, we learned about how the Greenway is actively returning the salmon stream and the la landscape to its natural conditions. At Burke Gilman Trail, we learned about embracing not only the natural landscape, but also the history of the land. At Dirty Harry's Balcony, we learned about the importance of trail work and accessibility to natural spaces. 
And at Clee Ellum Ridge, we learned about how a collection of organizations have, have come together to conserve public lands. Of course, none of these initiatives are small. But if you look a little bit deeper, they all start there. Each planted tree is a step towards a greener world. Each person who does trail work allows another to experience the great outdoors. Each large woody debris enables a healthier stream habitat. Um, each restoration event and leads to have, leaving an ecosystem healthier than it was before. Um, and then each person and organization here with the Greenway allows these projects we've heard about this morning to thrive. The Greenway's founder highlighted this principle in very simple terms, which is think globally, act locally. And although not quite as eloquent, I'll leave you today with my motto. Allow the little things to fuel you and let the orange sludge inspire you like it inspired me. Back to Lake Sammamish State Park. Thank you, Robin. Um, I love that you both taught us some science about clean water and showed us the inspiration in that orange sludge. Thank you so much for um, all that you're doing as a clean water ambassador and for being part of our event this morning. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Doug McClellan, uh, who is the president of the Greenway Trust Board of Directors. He's joined with his grandson, Lucas, and Ned, the therapy dog. Um, Doug's gonna, Doug's gonna close the show, but before I let him start, I wanna just give a shout out to my mom and my dad who are joining us from Michigan. Gotta take the chance, they don't get to come to Greenway events. And happy birthday, Lucy. Um, Doug, if you were bring us Carol, home. If you were Carol Burnett, you would have done this with your ear. That would <laughs> yeah. have been the symbol. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. I'm just so glad you could come and travel across the Greenway and learn all the things that you have. Um, I'm just a, a very happy grandfather right now. Um, 30 years ago, Christy and I uh, hiked the original trek and she was pregnant with Jacob and he's now 30. So he's considered that Greenway baby that was started out with the Greenway. Well, guess what? He and his partner Raquel had Lucas uh, last April and Lucas is a little over a year old and he is now a Greenway baby for the next 30 years. So um, it's just really exciting to be here and Ned, uh, I think he's all of our therapy dogs, so it's just super glad to be here. You know, I, I think about it, um, why do we give to things like the Mountains to Sound Greenway? We, be, we give because it's a, a part of our family. The friends that we make in the Greenway, the places we hike in the Greenway, the communities that we're a part of, um, we all get to learn and grow from, from the investments that we make here. And it's not something that we can do without your help. And so um, the board has put up a challenge grant of $35,000. So anything over 250 bucks, wow, uh, will be matched. That's always good. But more importantly, uh, this is just your chance to um, make a difference and uh, give as much as you can. Uh, there's a link I'm sure somewhere on the site that'll get you connected to it. But I just have to feel personally how blessed the Greenway has been to me and my family um, and Lucas here and he's enjoying the rain and he can't wait until we can get down on the sand and play here at Lake Sammamish State Park. And um, I'm just really happy for all that the Greenway's given to us. And that's why we should all give back to the Greenway as much as you can. And if you can't give in, in money, give in your time, share with your friends, go out and visit the Greenway, learn about it, learn about the communities and uh, just take ownership of your Mountains to Sound Greenway. Thanks so much and do the best you can to help out. Thank you, Doug. And thank you everybody for joining us this morning on this lovely morning with a few raindrops coming down again. Um, hopefully next year we'll be able to gather in person, but until then, um, take good care and I hope you get out and enjoy some part of the Greenway. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.